Hello everybody and welcome to this video in which we are going to be talking about a new pinball title which is just released on Nintendo Switch last week. It's called Pinball Lockdown and that is a really unfortunate name. Let's just say that up front. I'm really surprised that the developers didn't change that at the last moment. I mean sure it would have been a pain to do but anything to avoid associating your game with lockdowns right now would have made sense to me I would have thought but they haven't. They've stuck with it so we are playing Pinball Lockdown. There's actually a lot about this game that should catch the attention of pinball fans and I know it's landed without a splash and we'll get to the reasons for that shortly because they are very legitimate reasons that nobody really cared about this game. But on the surface in terms of the marketing potential for this uh, title there is a lot to like about it. Firstly the price is very much right it's about two bucks in Australian dollars. Two dollars is certainly good value if the game is good or at least reasonable enough to play for a couple of hours. Um, and rather than get one table, so a lot of the other cut priced Nintendo Switch pinball games are really just one table. This one comes with five. So you get an Alice in Wonderland table, which you just saw then. There is a Space Aged one, which is this one here. There is a Zen Garden one, which we'll get to shortly. The opening clip that you, of this video, you would have seen the dragon and stuff. That is a sword and sorcery themed one. And finally, there is a Las Vegas one with all the color and glamour and energy of Las Vegas. So the range of tables is good in the sense that the variety of themes is really neat. And once again, five tables for a couple of dollars, this game only needed to be reasonable to be worth the time for any pinball fan. Unfortunately, I think you all knew this was coming. Unfortunately, it's certainly not worth your time. Now, I also have a review of this up on digitallydownloaded.net if you would rather read my words, but I thought I'd use this video to talk about a couple of things that I mentioned in my review at greater depth so the video can be a bit of a compliment to the written review and really highlight some of the things that I found most interesting or the key takeaways that I have from this game. And the first thing is I want to talk about the one thing I really appreciated about this game and that is that it has a very homemade feel about it. All the tables feel like they were simply created in somebody's garage as a hobby. And the reason that appeals to me is because for the longest time I have had this desire to create my own pinball table. I don't know if I'll ever get a chance to do that because I am very not skilled <laughs> with my hands and I imagine that you probably need to be in order to create a pinball table. And also there's the time factor. But it is something that I would like to do and I would imagine that if I did get a chance to create my own pinball table it would probably look a little bit like one of these. I would hope that it would play better, but it would probably look like one of these. And the reason is quite simple. Um, when you look at a Zen Studios pinball table in the Pinball FX3 or whatever, or you look at some of the more complex pinball tables that are made now in a commercial setting, like the Lord of the Rings one that you can still find in arcades, they tend to be very complex and with, they have a lot of moving parts, they've got a lot of noise going on, a lot of music and all that stuff, which is obviously what you want from a commercial pinball table. But if you were to create one for yourself, you're probably not going to be able to go that far. You're probably going to be limited to having just this theme in your head and building some basic pinball mechanics around that theme. Now, me being me, it would probably be Hatsune Miku, but I can see myself creating something like this. If I was to create a table, it would probably look and feel a little bit like this. So there is, it's not a sense of nostalgia, I guess, but I, I, I can feel the creativity in this collection of tables. It, it would be nostalgic, I imagine, for some other people, simply because these feel like tables from the early era of pinball, and I think that's probably what the developer was aiming for. But for me, it's more about the aesthetic and the sense of creation that went into this game actually kind of hits, hits the right notes for me. I'm probably one of the few people that it would do so, but I, I did appreciate that. I mean, you look here at the kind of the design elements that went into the table. They've got the lovely art from Alice in Wonderland, and it just has that kind of wooden feel like you would imagine if you were going to create your own pinball table it would have a wooden base so that's that's the good thing about this game and it's the one thing that almost made it worth the two bucks that it cost me to give it a go unfortunately this game also acts as something of a warning about what you should not do if you're going to create your own pinball tables one of the issues is pretty much exclusive to the video game, video game platform and that's the frame rate I'm not a person that generally notices bad frame rates. It's not an issue for me because a lot of the games that I play are narrative driven and slow paced and for that reason it doesn't really matter if the frame rate doesn't hold up. But with pinball frame rates certainly matter and this table in particular, this dragon one, 
the frame rate really does go some very dodgy places and makes it very difficult to play. So that's an issue that is exclusive to video game pinball. It's obviously not something that will concern anybody creating their own table. But other issues within this game certainly are signs of bad pinball design. One is the weighting of the ball. So depending on the ball that you use, depending on how much tilt you put into the table, and depending on the actual quality of the flippers themselves, the, the feel of a pinball table can be very different. So while I like I love Zen Pinballs um, or Zen Studios' Pinball FX for the feel of the ball off the flippers, the way it rolls around this, the table and all that kind of thing, with this game, the ball feels too heavy and it feels quite slow to accelerate off the flippers which means that firstly there are times where you would feel like it should go up one of the ramps or whatever and it doesn't but also it just doesn't feel like you are pushing the ball across the table as much as you would like to so it's a i know it sounds like a, a pretty specific criticism and quite minor and quite subjective and it is a very subject subjective thing and who knows there might be some people out there that absolutely love the physics system of this pinball table but for me it feels like this is what would happen if you put a, too much of a tilt or use too heavy of a ball in your pinball table it would not roll around as nicely as you would like ideally you want to be able to flick the flipper and the ball should just roll effortlessly off it it feels like there's an effort to get the ball to roll in this one so that for me is the biggest issue if a pinball game doesn't matter if it's a real table or a virtual recreational one if a pinball game does that that's always the first sign that i'm not going to have too much enjoyment out of the game long term the other element that i look for when i decide which pinball tables i really enjoy playing is the way that they engage with the theme so pinball can't tell a linear story as, as such it's not designed around that it's a very arcade experience and of course the storytelling capability of the very medium is very limited but there is emergent storytelling that can really occur in the way that you flick the ball around the table the way it interacts with the objects that are on that table and the layout and the, the music and the aesthetics and all that kind of stuff how all that comes together really helps to determine whether the game does a good job of reflecting the theme I always return to Tales of the Arabian Nights when talking about a really well-themed table. It really captures the 1001 Arabian Nights aesthetic right throughout. It has that big genie that watches over the map. It has the big lamp that spins around. And interacting with that lamp by making it spin really does a good job of abstracting the experience of rubbing the lamp as Aladdin did in 1001 Arabian Nights. So that game really brings together all of the elements of playing a pinball game and finds a really clever way of linking it back to the theme. In this one, I mean, if you look at the space one as an example, there's a loop-the-loop -loop that you can hit the ball through, which vaguely, I guess, simulates the experience of zipping through space, but it doesn't really do much to reinforce that, and it kind of sits out there on its own. For the most part, you're just knocking the ball around a purple table. The same goes for the Alice in Wonderland one. It has some great moments, uh, it, it, some great, sorry, visual design elements in the background of the art, and also, you know, the, the little spinners, which are the cards of uh, the Queen of Hearts, and it has those kind of small Alice in Wonderland elements, but then doesn't do anything with them. Again, you're just knocking a ball around a table that doesn't feel like it's in, in any way related to the experience of reading Alice in Wonderland. This dragon one's much the same. You see how empty it is. That dragon sits there and watches. But it doesn't really do anything, and we've seen sword and sorcery themed tables that really have some amazing elements, like having to hit the ball into a castle to simulate a knight attacking at all, those kinds of things. Uh, this game doesn't have those elements, so it feels a little hollow in terms of doing justice to the theme, which then makes you wonder why there are five tables there at all. They could have just focused on doing one, doing it well, and making it themed to one particular theme, which people would have enjoyed then. Anyway, uh, that's me talking about my philosophy on pinball. I hope that was interesting. I'd love to hear your own thoughts, uh, listeners, because I know there are quite a few pinball fans that uh, watch this channel. Thanks, as always, for watching. Please do like and subscribe if you enjoy my videos. That way you won't miss any. Please do consider backing me on Patreon, because that really does help. Uh, and I also have visual novels. If you enjoy a visual novel or two, I'll put a link in. I've created three of them to date, and I think... Uh, I, I, you know, by buying them you support me and I hope you certainly enjoy them as well thanks as always for watching we'll see you next time